Hello and welcome to the MoWave 3 Up 3 Down podcast. I'm your host, Cam Smith, and I'm joined again this week by the commissioner of Missouri Football League, Josh Rogers. He's also the captain of the Empire. He beat himself. Gotta love it. Josh, how are you doing on this wonderful evening? Uh, I'm doing good. Just got back from a little vacation with my boys. Went to spring training this past week, so not looking... I mean, the weather today was nice, but um can't can't beat the florida weather but yeah you got to love spring training uh let's talk about that for a second because as of today it is it's saturday night while we're recording this uh just got the news jordan walker makes the 40-man roster how did he look in spring training uh so i got to watch batting practice on the field thursday and whoa like He's he's a big guy he's a big dude but uh, yeah, and it just his swing looked effortless, and yeah, I'm looking forward to see what he can do during the season. Uh, I'm excited for the Cardinal season. Uh, oddly enough, opening night for for the St. Louis Cardinals is the same night as Mo Whiff opening night. Season I three. Who, I don't know who planned the schedule, but yeah, it was it was Cole's idea to push it to March. It, so it was, we're gonna blame right. Cole. Uh, <laughs> but season three is here. It returns this week. Uh, Thursday night, you're going to get a lot of great matchups. I'm excited, Josh. I know you're excited. We put in a lot of hard work to get here, and it's finally here. How excited are you now that we're in the week of opening week? I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Exhaustion is, is part of that. Like, there, there's still a lot of work to do. and But, no, I'm, I'm excited about the matchups and, you know, the way that our schedule is planned with having everybody there opening night every team plays one game um i think it's gonna be awesome so uh the matchups are are, are pretty cool and i don't know if we're going to talk about that or not but uh the the matchups have some pretty cool stories behind them so yeah it's gonna be great uh excited that we're getting every team back out there for opening night again love that we do that thanks again to ryan hicks for that idea last year uh it's it's just a great way to start our season um we'll do it two more uh times throughout the season but nothing bigger than opening night. I remember last year it was probably our, our most packed night in the stands. It was loud sure. and it was fun. And I can't wait for, for Thursday night. Yeah. But looking forward to it. Before the games begin, what better way to start season three than a prediction podcast? Everybody loves predictions. We get them wrong all the time. We're going to get them wrong tonight. And, uh, but this just gives us something to, uh, to look back on and to get excited for this season. We're going to start with our feather shark division and do some predictions from our division sides. Uh, segment two will be the UCC STL side. And then we'll wrap up with my favorite segment, the awards predictions. And, we had some right and some wrong last year, so it'll probably be more of the same this year. What do you say, Josh? Are you ready? Yeah. All right. First up, we have the Feather Shark Division predictions. And we are going to start with each. We're going to run by each team in the division. We're going to talk about their record last year and whether we think that they are going to improve from this season. So we'll talk you know, kind of like a uh, over under uh, for their win total. And we'll see where we go from, from this year or from last year to this year. Let's start with the archers as they were at the top tier of that uh, division. When we did our draw, which oddly enough came out uh, a little lower in the power rankings than we thought, but archers were 12 and five last year, Josh, what do you think is going to be well, not necessarily their record, but do you think they're going to be better or worse than they were last year? Well, I mean, they wise. have, yeah, they have the reigning MVP Jordan Smith as their captain, and you know they're they're gonna go as well as as far as he can take them uh, with Rory being on the mend. Um, I see the Archers having a worse record than they did last year. And I, I would actually agree. That's kind of what I had here. Um, just the uncertainty of having a second pitcher. We know Jordan Smith is going to pitch lights out again. We know he's going to get wins for that team. They're going to be a scary team all year long. But really, who is going to uh, pick up that pitching slack when he's not? Because pitching uh, innings are down this year from they were last year. That's going to That could come into play for Jordan. So he can't pitch all the time. I mean, I hit the limit last year 
or I think I was like one or two innings short of the limit. Close. And I had 10 wins. Like right. that's in, like going to be almost impossible to do this year. And um, so 12 wins for the archers. I don't see them hitting, hitting that number again. Um, I could see them hitting 10, but I think that's even going to be tough. I, the, their team with you know they have Jordan and Roy's bat is also good but what are the chances of them having that same record without Roy as a pitcher it's just going to be hard right and with two guys his two draft picks I mean unknown guys um I mean Ethan Bailey Bailey I think is how you say his name yeah. um you know he has some experience but his other draft pick Tony Saggio has zero wiffle ball or competitive wiffle ball experience so the two unknowns are, you know, like you said, who's going to pick up the pitching slack with Rory being yeah. um, not quite at 100%. So, yeah, I, I don't – I could I've, see them getting to 10, but the, I think that's going to be hard for them too. Yeah, I've seen Ethan in a couple of videos playing in NWA, I think is what it is. Uh, and it looks like a fantastic player. I'm excited for him to get out here um, and see what he can do. I know he was uh, – towards the top of all their award categories last year as a rookie. Um, but I know his availability throughout right. the season is not full time. He's going to miss a little bit of the beginning of the season and potentially some of the end. I'm not sure. Um, so that yeah. could play a factor, but I think he'll be a good number two for them when he's here. It's just how long can he do it and how many wins can he get while he's here? So let's jump to the, Melon Heads, who had a 10 and 7 record last year. They made the championship game. They lost in that series, but they add Sam Eichenlob. Do they go better or worse than 10 and 7? See, I had a hard time with this one. And even now I'm I'm kind of questioning what I put down. Um I see them going the same. There you go. I see them, like I see them ten, staying at 10 and 7. Seasons. Yeah. Um, I, it, it's hard, though, because they have the reigning uh, Silver Slugger, the reigning batting champ, um, and then, two you know, with... Those are two different players. <laughs> right, right. And um, adding Sam Eichenlob just makes that lineup a little deeper and their pitching staff deeper. So, um yeah, like I said, I'm still questioning why why I put down same, but I'm gonna stick with same. I like that. I did. I had same or better. I don't think they're gonna get anything less than ten wins. This team is just too good, top to bottom. Their lineup is solid. Um, they're pitching, you know, with with Spencer, Jason, and Sam. Like that's three solid pitchers. They got a lot to mix up there, and I I don't see them getting under ten wins. I think it's another double digit win, and and a good push late in the season for uh, for maybe another championship appearance. Appearance, who knows? So enough about the Melonheads because they get talked about enough in the group chat. Uh, let's go to the... They do the talking for the group <laughs> they chat. They do. They do in the group chat. Let's go to the Mojo. Nine and eight last year. A couple of big additions to that roster with Gus Skibby, with Jackson Crosley, Brett and Blake Spencer, uh, you name it, Chris Matters back. Matters back. That's that's a lot of additions. Mojo nine and eight over or under. Over. Uh, you know, Gus Gibby being there for at least three nights, um, potentially more than that. Like Gus is probably Gus is gonna get them some wins. Um, Sam Skibby, obviously our, our first ever MVP, the first ever overall number one pick. Um, can't go wrong with him. So it's it's going to be interesting to see who shows up because they have you know they're kind of a part time crew, um, but it that lineup we were just talking before this like if if they were all there every night it that should be the number one team overall like they that is a scary group of guys if you put them all together there every night so I see them getting more than nine wins. Um, yeah, I, I see them up there in that division for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely have them with more than nine wins. I think this is going to be a tough division. Uh, already that's, you know, three great teams with 
you know, getting close to 10 wins, it's going to be hard to see what everybody else can do. And obviously probably one of these teams isn't going to get 10 wins. Um, but if I had to put money on the mojo, I got it. I got to pick over nine wins. They had nine wins last year with Sam and Josh as their pitchers. And I think as good of a pitcher as Josh is, their depth in pitching has improved so much. Now with Sam, you have Gus for those couple weeks, but Jackson when he is there and Brett when he's there, it's a dangerous team on the pitching, on the pitching mound and in the lineup. So I got to go over, um, and we'll talk about it here in a minute with uh, division winners, but it's going to be a close one. Uh, but before we do that, let's go to the pilots. They were two and fifteen last year, finishing the bottom of uh, the Moif standings overall. They had the number one pick. He looks great. We all know it. Got to go more than two wins, right? Absolutely. He Caleb alone will get them five wins. I guess not it. more. Um, and putting that down, it, Josh said five wins for the rookie. Hopefully, it's not against the Empire this year because both of their wins came against us. So that <laughs> that kind of kind of hurts a little bit. Um, but no, I think um, Caleb being the number one pick in the draft this year, he's gonna he's gonna pitch them to some wins for sure. And yeah. um, you know, depending on what Adam does with the the second pitcher of the night. Um, whether it's himself or Mark Vogler, um, or, or Sam, even Sam, Sam yeah. Um, yeah, um, they're definitely a stronger group. And if they can all be there, and I think they are going to be a committed group this year, I think that will definitely help them out as well. So, yeah, and I, I think they are for teams. sure. Yeah, I think they're definitely going to be more dedicated. They'll be there more times than they're not. Um, I yeah, got to smash the over button there. Uh, like I said, Caleb's going to get them wins. And I think Mark being in that second position and not having to rely on himself in one, if not both games, he's going to get more wins than he had potentially last year. So, which I guess, yeah, he probably would. Cause I think Brett was there for, again, it was Brett there during your season or your series. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm going to bet Mark, himself will get at least two wins and that pilots team smash the over and, and you know i i've heard sam's sam skibby say before you don't want anybody to go oh and 17 or you don't want anybody to go 17 and oh you want it to be a yeah. balanced uh throughout the entire league and so just for the pilots sake i i want them to be better i want them to do better and i hope they do better so yeah. And I, I've said it, you know, to Cole, I've said it to a couple other guys, having a guy like Caleb, you have a chance every single night. And whether it's you pitch him against the guy's ace or you pitch him against the number two team just to get a win, you do that half the season, you're in a good spot you and you're making do what you got to do. Yep, yeah, do what absolutely. you got to do. All right, Josh, who is your division winner for the Feather Shark division? It's a tough one. It is. And... You know, you have the reigning MVP, you have the reigning silver slugger, you have the first ever overall MVP and number one draft pick, and you have this year's number one draft pick. Like, yeah, that's that's crazy. Wow. But, um, that should have been our storyline last week is the two (laughs) MVPs are in this, in this division. Yeah. I am seeing the mojo win this division this year. Wow. I I think. I think with the additions that Doug did, um, and like you mentioned, their pitching staff, and you know, I think Sam Skibby will be there every week. Um, but who their number two guy every week could be somebody else's number one guy every week. Yep. And so I I see them as very dangerous. And I like that um, pick. Yeah. And like we said, we 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 see the archers record going down a little bit. Um, melon heads, I see them at around the same. So uh, I see Mojo taking over the uh, Feather Shark division this year. I like that pick. It's a good pick. It's not who I have, but it is a good pick. I, I think, I mean, th- this division is going to come down to the end uh, with three good teams. Um, I, I'm i going to take the Melon Heads. I, coming off a, uh, you know, championship uh, series loss. Like it, 
adding Sam Eichenlaub makes that team so much better. I I don't see how they aren't the favorites in that division going forward. Uh, just personally playing against them last year, we saw their hitting stats. Yes, it was inflated a couple of games, but they still hit the ball all season long against everybody. Ryan Brown hit home runs off me. Spencer Rogat can hit home runs off of anybody. Jason, we've seen, he led the league in home runs last year. This team can hit, and now they can pitch, and their lineup got a little bit deeper. I got to take the melon heads to win this division. Um, and, you know, until somebody beats them there, you know, they ran, they made the the championship game last year. So I, how can and I not write off that? I, I, it was a tough pick, but like my, my thing is, it, and I think they can do it, but until they prove it, like, can they carry on what they did last year? They're hitting, like you said, there was some, a little inflation here and there, but they also had some good hits off of good pitchers as well. But like, yeah. can they continue that? into this year where everybody's pitching staff has gotten better. So yeah. that's, I think that's the reason why I did not get them at number one. And so the you had the Mojo at number one, there will be two teams out of this division that make the playoffs. And then from each side, that third and fourth uh, team will be fighting for wild card spots. Who takes your second spot to get into the playoffs from the feather shark side? I hate to say it, but the melon heads. Yeah, that's like, good. That's good. You know, I like I can see them continuing on what they did last year, but that's what I have in question. Can they continue on? I know they're gonna light me up for this, and I say bring it. Like yeah, it is what it. it is. Uh, but until they prove it, like prove me wrong, like go for it. So, but I, I see melon heads are gonna be in the playoffs with with that lineup. And with their their top three guys on the on the mound, so um, definitely Melonheads and Mojo will be one and two is my prediction. Mojo than Melonheads, but we'll see. I like Who'd it. You have? I am going to shock you a little bit. I am not going to take the Mojo here, um, only because I can't bet against Jordan Smith, uh, the reigning MVP. Uh, Number 30, I think it's number 32 or 34 player in the country last year. Um, he he hit so well last year. We know he's going to shut people out again. This is his third ever season of wiffle ball. He's only going to get better. He's going to be the best pitcher in this league, if not already. Right. He's going to be very soon. I just, we've seen it with me in the Bombers, carrying uh the pitching staff two wins i had 10 wins last year out of our 12 and nick only had two regular season wins jordan can do that for the archers and i think that puts them in the in that number two spot it i don't care how deep your lineup is you have to beat jordan and until that changes i'm gonna ride with jordan but i think it's going to be very close could even come down to a tiebreaker between the three of them i would love to see that it'd be awesome so yeah, you can't go wrong with, with the MVP, it, it, but we'll, we'll see. I, I, it, this, that division is going to be tough. Yeah. And Gu Gus being there a couple more weeks than we think, I think is going to make a, a huge difference as well. So Gus is one of those don't, players. Don't sleep on the pilots. Like no, I know they have a rough go at it, but Caleb can, can be the Jordan. He Caleb could, can, we, we saw it in, in year one of Jordan and, Caleb right. is going to be that type of player. It's just we have yet to see it. Would I be surprised if they do are in that conversation and it's a four-way race? I'm not going to be surprised at all. But if I had to bet, I'm going to keep them on the bottom right now. And I'm going to say it's Melonheads, Archers, Mojo, then the Pilots. I get it. All right, let's jump over to the UCC STL division predictions all right same thing here for the ucc stl division we're going to start with that top tier again the thunderbirds 13 and 3 best record in mowiff last year regular season two and four what's that two and four we play 17 games what did i say 13 and three it was 13 and four. It's for sure. I had that written down right in front of Except me. And I still don't even know. Uh, 13 and four. Do they replicate that amazing 
season yes. that they had a year ago and get even more wins, or are they going to be under? I see them being the same or one or two games under. Um, Like I said, I, I, everybody's pitching staff, everybody's lineup got way better with this draft. Um, everybody kind of rebuilt or built upon what they already had. So, um, yeah, I, you know, with, with Andrew and Tony as their one and twos and even John and Josh, like they're, yep. <laughs> their pitching staff is, I mean, I, if you put them all together, you, they go up against the Mojo's whole group of pitching staff. Um, but I think with the Thunderbirds, they're all, they usually will be there every time, every week. So, um, but yeah, I, I see them staying around that same record or maybe just a game or two under. Yeah, I have them as under 13 wins only because it's going to be so hard to replicate that because every team has gotten so much better. 13 wins is a lot. I still think they are one of the favorites in the in the league. I just think it's going to be hard to do the same thing. I would not be surprised if they went over or the same, but if I had to bet, I'm going to take, like you said, probably one or two games over. I think they're an easy pick for over 10 wins. It's just I sure. don't know if they'll get to 13. Yeah, 13 is going to be tough for sure. Yeah. Team is top to bottom lights out, though. They're going to be – they're going to be a hard, hard team to beat. Let's jump to the Bombers. 12-5 and five last year. Defending champs. Do they get more, less, or the same than 12 wins? More. Ooh, I like it. Let's go. It sucks to say, but... Yeah. Uh... I think with the addition of your draft picks um, helps your pitching staff. Maybe gives Nick some time off or you'd be able to kind of split that second game with those two guys. Um, maybe let one of them be a closer type guy, whatever. Um, but I see that being a huge benefit to you. Uh, maybe even allowing you to take even a night off if need be. Yep. You still have Nick as your your third guy to to pitch that second game, and uh, I wouldn't even put Nick off as just a third guy. Nick has looked fantastic recently. We went out. Uh, I actually we didn't get to go out this weekend. I was a little too busy, but we went out a couple weeks ago, and Nick looks fantastic, sharp, throwing a little bit harder, and coming off that championship win for him in that second game. He's got a lot of confidence now. He knows he can do it. He's going to build off that season he had last year. So it's oh, it no puts doubt. me puts me in a tough spot as a manager. But man, I'm excited to actually get to manage games now with a deeper pitching staff. I have three guys, three pitchers who I trust, and it's going to be fun. Of when do I get to put put guys in certain positions? What matchups I get to do? Instead of before where you only have two pitchers, it's like, okay, you're pitching game one, I'm pitching game two, whatever. Now it's more strategizing in play. Uh, and I, I would agree. I, I think we're going to have more, if not the same amount of wins. Um, you know, I'm kind of in the same position I was with my arm as I was last year. So, like, I don't see me really taking a a, a step down only because – now I actually know what I'm doing for the full season, whereas the beginning of the season last year, I was just hurt and I could barely throw. Now I have a plan where I can actually be able to pitch the whole year with hopefully without as much pain. And uh, But yeah, not having to rely on myself for those 10 wins, which right. a lot of those games, I didn't pitch full games. I came in at the end and whether we blew it and then I came in and we won or whatever, but uh yeah, just having having Justin is going to be huge for this pitching staff. And, yeah, Nick's definitely going to get a lot of time. Justin's going to get a lot of time. And that probably means I take a little step down, but I trust these guys a lot. And I think, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe we do see a closer role or a mixture in games. Like, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, but I, I, I'm I very confident and very excited to to see how we uh, how we do. So. It'll be interesting. Yeah, but, it's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, you guys will be a game or two better, I think. Yeah. All right, Mambas, 6-11 and 11 last year. 
They got uh, James Dutton in the draft. Over under six wins. Over a little bit. Like um, yeah, you know, with Ryan O'Rear being there, the rookie last year that you know Cole relied on a lot. Um, with his availability being, kind I don't of think he, I don't think he's gonna miss too much time. Well, that's good. Uh, so I think case, it might like, only be like one, like one or two, maybe three weeks, but I don't see it being very much, very many. Well, then in that case, then I definitely see them going over six. Um, you know, with with James and Ryan O'Rear, um, you know, I, I I see Cole not wanting to pitch as much anymore, and you know, letting those other guys take control on the mound. Um, so I, I think James being a huge addition to his pitching staff will definitely uh, increase their win total from last year and. You know that that lineup with Cole in the lineup, any lineup is yep. a tough lineup, and it just got deeper with James's addition. Um, I know he, he, you know, Cole lost Jackson to the free agent signing to the Mojo, but the addition of James, who um, was pitching before we even had our spring training, you know, he built a strike zone in his backyard. Um, I think he's going to be very committed and just very excited to be there. So I think that alone, and he's learning. Right. And he looked really good at, at our spring training with, um, you know, on the mound and his swing. So, um, yeah, I see mama's going just, just a hair, a hair better than last year. Yeah. I, if you listened to our, uh, mine and Adam's prediction last year, we actually had him, uh, winning the championship if it wasn't for our own teams. And, uh, I gotta, I gotta go over on the six wins because I think they're, you know, they have the same roster, but now besides Jackson and it's James instead. And I think James is going to be there more than Jackson was last year. And I think that immediately gives them a better chance to win. And Ryan O'Rear, when he pitched in a couple games last year, he was like this close to winning like multiple games, a walk off home run of Logan Trotter. Yeah. I think he had like three, one run losses. And it all happened like at the end of the game, it was like heartbreak losses for them. And like now I, I just, he's going to be better. He's, he's fine tuned a couple things in his uh, pitching mechanics where it's, he's not getting as tired. Um, And he's just had more experience now. Like I don't see any way that that lineup and the addition of uh, another pitcher doesn't get them more than six wins. Like I would be shocked if they don't get six wins. This this team is too good not to. No, I totally agree. Last team, everybody's favorite team, the Empire. You guys are four and thirteen last year. You got a couple of big additions this year. You got you. I know you're picking the over. Thousand percent. <laughs> Yeah, a thousand love it. percent. Yeah, I mean, and and I'll start with this one just because it is your team. I got to pick the over two. Um, four and thirteen, four wins. You know, adding Colin, bam, right there is going to get you at least four wins. Um, and then Tommy is another guy who I would be very comfortable pitching my second games, and uh, he's going to get a couple wins. So right there already, you're over four. Uh, I would bet on it. Um, I know we've heard the talks about people. People went zero, but no, it ain't gonna happen. Uh, you guys are going at least at least five or six wins. At least uh, I would be shocked uh, if it wasn't. Uh, I could see you guys winning. And like what we said with the other division, this one is going to be close all the way through. Um, there's, it's really just going to be a toss up. Uh, but yeah, gotta gotta pick the over on four. Anything about your team? Yeah, man, I am super excited. Um, you know, we got lit up because we did our own little practice by ourselves. Somebody called us out. I don't know who that was. Had to. Uh, um, you know, the first one had to be just the team. But anyways, uh, you know, everybody was excited. It. We were all there. All five of us were there. Um, and, you know, Colin was just a sponge, just listening to everything, trying everything I was talking to him about. Um, and you know, even Tommy, they both have some pretty nasty pitches already, and they're just going to get better. And See, that was your mistake. That's scary. Your mistake was 
you should have had me there because I love coaching up these guys. I know you're a good coach and you're a great pitcher and you know them. I got a whole box of wiffle balls that I just cut up right here. I, I know a lot and I love helping these guys with fine tooth. Look what I did with Nick bone. I mean, I'm not denying just that. I'm more just knowledge. A personal, oh, yeah, personal totally little practice with just my team. And, you know, Tom, Dolan's dad is so into this, man. And he is so confident. And he is just, just itching to get out there. And so I'm very excited to see even, you know, Mike Flores, year three of wiffle ball for him. And you, everybody saw it last year, his improvement. He turned um, it up at the end of oh, last yeah, year. Towards the end of the season. So, I I don't know what I'm gonna do with just my lineup. Like it, it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, how I you know field that lineup and uh, you know Colin e- easy Tommy. easy lineup. You know, maybe like uh, let's say let's say Colin, Mike, um, Tommy. Where's the mute button? Where's the mute? Button? <laughs> uh, uh, let's just leave Josh off the rock off the uh, lineup, and they'll be all right. They'll get more than four wins. <laughs> That's in my home run off of you. <laughs> anyways, anyways, uh, uh, no, I, I'm excited for the empire and you know, the, the progress that we will be making this year more yeah. than four wins for sure. Yeah. And like, like we said, every team has just gotten significantly better. These win loss totals are going to be all over the place. Like that's why I didn't even want to put down what we think the record is going to be like just an over under because it's going to be impossible to figure out who's getting what record because any given night, anything could happen. All right. Division winner from the UCC STL side, who you got? You go first. All right. Easy bombers to the moon. Let's go. I I mean, I got to pick my team. Uh, We're the defending champs. Uh, You know, we didn't win the division last year. We tied with the archers and they had the tiebreaker over us. Um, but I gotta pick. I gotta pick the bombers. It's it's my team. I'm not betting against us. I love this team, and I'm excited. We got the pitching to do it, and uh, we'll see what our our bats can do because they're hit or miss. But we always seem to come up in key situations. So I'm taking the bombers. That you do. You do. Uh, not a bad pick, but I went Thunderbirds. Yeah, you had um, to. Yeah, you know we 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 talked about their lineup. Their pitching staff is scary and you know when we all found out that we were in the thunderbirds division together we're like well that that's not cool so yeah um uh yeah 13 and 4 last year maybe a hair or two underneath that this year but gotta go thunderbirds as the the ucc stl division winner yeah i have them as my number two lock for the playoffs uh like you said they're just they're too good not to i could easily see this team winning a division especially in the regular season um, it's going to be hard to knock them off that pole. They were the number one team last year going into the playoffs. Wouldn't be surprised if they do it again. Josh, who is your second team? You. Kofi's right here. Can't, can't go against you. Yeah. Love um, it. Until somebody, like you've said it multiple times, we've all heard it, until somebody – Knocks you off, like you can't bet against you. So yeah. Um, I see you just maybe getting in that same kind of tiebreaker situation or maybe just a game under Thunderbirds. And so you and Thunderbirds moving on um and not having to fight out in, in the wild card yeah. uh battle. Yeah, tune in uh this week on Twitter. We're gonna find out where in the top ten I land in the uh, overall fast pitch players from last year. We've had quite a few players on that list of 100 players. Uh, knowing that I'm in the top 10 is pretty, pretty cool. I'm excited. Next. <laughs> All right. So we've we've each talked about our two division winners from each side. We have two wild card spots. So it'll go from those four bottom teams. Uh, two of them will make the playoffs. Two of them will not. Josh, you have... Let's see, uh, yourself, the Empire, and the Mambas from our side fighting for a wild card spot. And on the other side, you have the Archers and the Pilots fighting for a wild card spot. Who do you have as your your number one, so the t- more the higher seated wild card spot? Archers. It's a good. Like pick. you said, you know, fighting. 
Jordan Smith, MVP, he's going to get them eight wins, nine wins himself. So um, Archers take that first over wild card spot yeah, for me. So you had the mojo in as your uh, playoff lock from those first two, and I have them as my number one wild card spot. Like, like you said, that any one of those three teams could get into that division spot. I think it's going to be so close that they're the top. I think they're a lock for the playoffs for sure. The team is too good not to. Um, it's going to be tough, but let's go to that final wild card spot. So the two teams here aren't going to make the playoffs. You want me to go first? I do. I want to hear what you have to say. All right. I love it. Uh, you asked me a question last episode on if I thought that, uh, two teams from our division would make the playoffs and already are in that wild, or I guess you all asked four. if all four and already not going to happen because I had the mojo in. And that was why I couldn't, I had to say no last week. Um, so for my final wild card spot, I have the mojo or sorry, I have the Mambas. I knew you I, were on that. That's all good. I, and, and it has nothing to do with, I don't think that you and the pilots are going to be right there. Cause I think you will, but Cole missing the playoffs two years in a row. I don't, I can't, I can't sit, bet on that. Like Cole is too good of a player and too much of a winner. We we've seen it. I mean, you personally have seen it in the past. Uh, he's too good of a hitter and Ryan O'Rear is too good of a hitter that I just, I can't see them not making the playoffs. And I think it's going to take a little bit of time. Potentially I could be a hundred percent wrong. Cause these rookies are so good, but if I had to bet, I'm going to bet that the rookies are the reason why you and the pilots don't make the playoffs right away. I think you guys are a hundred percent a playoff team and could win a playoff matchup with those guys, but I, I can't bet against uh, Cole and the Mambas again. Your brother. I get it. I get it. And he's, he's too – I've faced him too many times. I have to face him week one, and I'm already in my head of like, how do I beat Cole? Because he's the type of player that no matter who you are, he can score off anybody. Yeah. No, I I can't disagree, but I'm going to. Um. And I can't you gotta bet take against yourself. my team. Right. Like, I know right now we're not a one or two seed. Like, I know it, and I, I can be honest about it. Um, I'm not going to be that guy. I'd be like, I'm putting my team at number one. Like, that's just not – I'm an honest guy, and I, I know where we're at. So, But I am going to put us in the playoffs because I do have that confidence in what I saw at spring training, what I saw at our practice, and how these – these three rookies are going to improve throughout the season and just the, the confidence that they have already. So I am very excited to say that the empire will make the playoffs this year. If you're watching on YouTube in my face, you just saw it. You can't just beat Gonzaga. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at that at all. And I think if, um, well, my bracket's busted anyway. It doesn't matter. I had Alabama. I had Alabama winning. I'd be mad so. too. I'd be mad too. Um, I would say if you were healthy and could throw easily, easily a playoff team. Uh, so I think you know if you if you're able to come back next year, or even just in a limited time, you know, one or two innings here and there at the end of this year, who knows? That could help. That could potentially put you in a playoff spot if you need it down the road. Uh, all these guys are in a great position to succeed with all of us around them. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I got to go with with the the vets with Cole and O'Rear. Uh, I mean, we saw them both of them hitting last year. They were in the top category, and now they have a second pitcher to get them some wins. I it's going to be hard to bet against them. So, but it's going to be great. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be a fun season. I'm, I'm looking forward to it because this is, we said it last year that last year was going to be amazing. And this year's going to be so much better. It competitive wise. It's, it's going to be, awesome. I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, that us and the pilots do get better. Um, and like I said, you don't you want will. anybody to you be will. in the cellar. You don't want to be a, anybody, you know, even the Thunderbirds being 13 and four last year, like that's really good for a 17 leagues or 17 game season. So, um, 
there's gonna be a lot of teams around 500 and yeah, i could see it it'll be interesting to see you know what the records are and and you know i'm i'm guessing there will be a tiebreaker in the wild card um winners here so. i want playoff spots to come down to that last week and we all are playing games everybody plays that last week and i want one of those games at least one of those games to matter i would love for like two or three of them to matter that would be fantastic amazing Uh, so we're not going to go into a a full playoff preview we'll do that later when we get there but beginning the season hasn't started yet you got to pick one team to win it all and you can't pick your own team so you can't pick the empire and as everyone knows, I will pick the Bombers, but I won't hear as my prediction on the podcast because I'm a great host, I like to think. Uh, so let's go. Opposite, or sorry, not opposite, but different teams from our own. Who do you have winning for season three? Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. It's a good pick. It's a I great just, pick. I see their lineup so deep. There's really not an easy out anywhere those guys get on base those guys have great swings um it's just a deep lineup so i see the thunderbirds taking it this season it's going to be fuel for the bombers uh group chat (sighs) picking against us again we've only won twice you know but no thunderbirds are, are a great pick they're a great team um my pick besides the bombers it's the archers. You're gone there. I you gotta beat Jordan Smith in the playoffs. It's you the these past two years, obviously it's it hasn't been all me. I will a hundred percent it has not been all me, but you've had to beat me in the playoffs majority of the time. And Jordan is a guy that can win you a playoff series by himself. And I think he's the type of player that he can do it. And if I had to bet on anybody, I'm going to take pitching all day because that's what we've seen in the past. And Jordan's a guy that can win the championship, not necessarily by himself, but by himself. So oh. I'm going to take the Archers. Um, I'll, I mean, I'll probably be wrong because I picked the Mambas last year and they didn't even make the playoffs. So Archers not making the playoffs. Write it down. Sorry, Write Jordan. Down. Jinxed you. Jinxed you. And you jinxed the Thunderbirds. So uh, Sorry, but- Andrew. Yeah. What's a Hawkeye? <laughs> Got to love it. All right. That was fun. But we're going to do my favorite portion of the predictions. And it's going to be the awards predictions. Josh, last year, we saw a rookie in Ryan Brown win the batting championship highest batting average in the league. Do you see a rookie doing that this year or do you see Ryan Brown repeating or do you have someone else? Uh, I mean, I would love it if the number two overall pick uh, won the batting champ, that would, that would make me very happy. Um, it, would. It, it could happen, but uh, we've seen the progression of a certain player and I think that same person that won the MVP last year will continue on. And so Ooh, Jordan Smith hot take. is my batting champ for 2023. Hot take. I love it. Let's see. Jordan Smith last year was ninth in average. Not bad. That's a good pick. I like that. Think about, think about season one, Jordan Smith. Oh, yeah. Jordan Smith was not even a, a – you would not classify him as a hitter in season one. And he was a ma- – ninth. Like, that's insane. Or what did I say? Was it's it ninth? ninth, I think. Ninth on average? Insane. Yeah, yeah insane improvement. And, yeah, he's going to improve again. Um, I actually I, – I was tossing it up between two players, uh, both in that, like, top – I think top – Four, maybe even both in the top three. Uh, the guy who had it taken away in the last game of the season last year, Jason Worsenholm, could easily do it again. Um, but I think my pick is going to be Ryan O'Rear. Oh, he, okay. He hit okay. everything last year, whether it's fast or slow, and he was in that top. Uh, let's, let's see. He was, he was third last year in average. And I think... 
you know, even him missing a couple games, like I don't think it's – he's still going to qualify with the number of bats. Like he's going to get a ton. He's going to hit a lot. Uh, I could easily see him being a guy that's that's leading that category for sure. But I don't think you could go wrong with him either. Like that's not where I would have gone, but I think he is definitely a, a candidate for that. That's that's a great pick, sir. Yeah, thank you. You had a great pick as well. I liked it. I didn't even think about think about that. That's That's good. All right, let's go – to manager of the year and last year we had uh andrew nichols win this award and i think this year is going to be a lot different with this manager of the year award now that we have expanded rosters you're gonna you're gonna have to plug in place now that got most teams now have three pitchers you're going to see a lot more managing of games instead of just here's my five guys let's go play so this will actually like this is like the first like real manager of the year. Who do you have taking manager of the year? Who's like your favorite going into the season to win this award? I think it has to be Doug uh, with the mojo. You know, with that roster of his part time guys. You know, having to plug in place his pitching staff. Who you know, I'm sure he's going to rely on Skibby, Sam Skibby. We got to specify now since we have two skibbies. Um, <laughs> we, I think he's going to rely on Sam as being the number one and being there every time for him. So that's, that's nothing new, but you know, will his number two be Brett Spencer? Will it be Jackson Crosley? Will is it Gus's week? Like, so, um, and you know, if he <laughs> has more Spencer. than, if he, if he has more than six guys show up, like, does he only bat four? Because this year you can you can choose to just bat three if you would like, so or you can bat your entire roster is completely up to the manager. So, um, I think Doug with the biggest roster in the league, he has eight. Nobody else has. I don't think anybody has seven. Do, do they? I think everybody else is either at six or five. No. So because I think I I have like one of the most with six. Yeah. Um. And Andrew has six. Yep. And I think that might be it. I think everybody else is at five. I think everybody, yeah. Um, so him having Doug having the biggest roster. I know they're part time guys, but um, you know, he he told me he they were meeting today to see you know who's showing up which week. They're kind of trying to get it laid out now. Yeah. And so I think that alone gets Doug um, manager of the year in season three. I think it's Doug's award to lose. Um, he has. Like, he has all the potential to win this award with the mix and matching that he's going to have to do. I think he's going to do a great job. He's done a great job the first two seasons. Uh, but now there's just a lot more pieces in place. Um, and it could go really well or it could go really bad. If it does go bad, I think my second uh, candidate would would probably be Jason. Only because he's going to have to manage three different pitchers with uh, himself, um Sam and Spencer um, and how they kind of work that out and work that out with Spencer being there and, and dealing around their lineup. Um, I think he could potentially have uh, a case there as well. Um, obviously Andrew could do it again. Um, I mean, I could be up there, you know, having three different pitchers, depending on how I, I play my lineup. Uh, I wasn't in the top three last year, but I, I heard from a lot of people in the league how they thought that I should have been recognized more. Um, and that's just from players in the league. And like, I appreciated that because like they saw what I was doing, like not only just on the field stuff, but like improving with Nick bone. And I think we could see that like potentially with you and Adam is how you guys coach up these rookie players, especially with Caleb and Colin and even Tommy, how they perform could have an impact on you as a manager and how how you get ranked there so it's a wide open award but i would say it's doug at the top of the list for sure he has all the the list of things that that you're looking for when you're talking about manager of the year i agree all right here's the fun one rookie of the year now last year this was very very tough we had a lot of good rookies it's the same thing this year is caleb your favorite no, you're gonna go. You're gonna go, Colin. I love it. I have to go, Colin. <laughs> I have to. Yeah. No, it, uh, it's it's great. I love it. I I think Colin is gonna be like 
I know everybody was like, oh, Caleb was number one. I think Colin could have gone number one easily. And, you know, those two he together. Could have if Caleb wasn't here. I'm saying even with Caleb <laughs> here, Colin could be a number one. He's Colin a great He's going to be a great player. Um, you know, just the the watching him try things a couple weeks ago and him looking at me like, holy crap, that worked. Like, oh, my gosh, like, that's what I need to do. Okay, like. He is going to be a good player. And, oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Caleb's, yeah, Caleb's going to be in that talk too. Don't get me wrong. And even Tommy, like, I think, you know, both of my rookies and, uh, I mean, no, I got three, but Tommy and, and Colin are going to get a lot of time on the mound. And, uh, but no, I see Colin as my rookie of the year in season three, just above Caleb. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my favorite's Caleb. I, I will brag about his stuff, what I've seen, uh, just the way he carries himself. He's already going to fit in on the mound and, and just in the batter's box as well. Like this guy, he's got the talent. He is the Jordan Walker of our league right now, pretty much. Uh, he's going to he's gonna show out. And uh, if I got to put any money on who I'm having for rookie of the year, it's him. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised. That. I'll yeah. take that back. I mean, I think it's going to be a tight race again because there's so many good rookies. I, I've said it time and time again. This is probably the most talent we've had in a rookie class, and that's saying a lot with how much talent we had last year. Last year was phenomenal talent. This year, just ah man, like the top end, like these guys are so good that it's just going to be hard to beat. And they're young. I wish I was that young again. Uh, I know a lot of us do. So. I'm gonna say I sure do. I I'm sure gonna do. say Caleb, but also don't sleep on Justin because that guy can throw. I you know he might not be as good of a hitter as uh Caleb or Colin, but coming in as a two to three pitcher on a team on our team and with the stuff that he has, don't sleep on him because the guy can throw and it's, he's going to show that uh, pretty early on in the season. And he's got no pressure, you know, having me and Nick also there. So that could help him. But I, I got, I got to pick Caleb as my favorite for sure. All right. Let's skip over gold hands. We all know it's Colt. No, I'm just kidding. Gold hands wow. won by Cole like last year. Uh, he was, in my opinion, the best fielder in the country last year, even though I don't agree that he won our award last year, because even he admitted that I had a better season fielding than him last year in Mo with, but overall, he is the best, one of the best fielders in the country. He is my favorite to win this award. Uh, even though I'm still coming after him, uh, but Josh, who do you got for gold hands? No. I didn't have him written down. I love it. Uh, but now that I'm thinking of it, if if Ryan O'Rear is there the majority of the time and James is there, that takes Cole off the mound. And he was even on. good on the mound. Oh, absolutely. But Which that gives insane. him more chances yeah. on the left side of the infield or right side, depending on you know what hitter. Yeah. But um but okay, let's say Okay, it is Cole, but let's say we're not picking Cole. Yeah. I have three people. Oh, I love it. Let's go. So I know you felt like you got gypped last year. And no, I, I did get gypped. Cole even Cole admitted it. He won and he admitted like, it. You felt like you did. I got Anyways. you. Anyways. I had more spectacular plays. Watch the championship. Even though it was before that, watch that championship game and tell me I was not the best fielder in my whiff last year. I have Cam Smith down. Love it. I have Sam Skibby down. Love that. He was third last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to throw me in there. I'm just going to oh, throw some confidence look at this guy. my way. Love it. Um, You know, I was out the last half of the season, unable to do anything. So I'm not going to be on the mound at all, maybe until the end, if at any. So I'm going to put myself in there as long as I can make the plays. I see myself yeah. uh, up there, at least top three. I, I can see myself breaking the top three there. So. There you go. I love that. Why? Well, I guarantee it. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna make an error in like the first two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hope like, you do. It's good. It's gonna happen. I, there's no way I went a whole season last year without making an error and not gonna make one this year. It's now, gonna be an, an will, easy play too. I will say I probably can't turn a double play yet, 
that's one thing know, I have going for me. I, can I don't turn know if I can plays. throw a ball that far or that hard yet, but I I can see myself making some plays. But we'll see. I'll yeah. probably get lit up about that in the group me, but we'll see. It's gonna be fun Bring it. for Bring sure. It. All right. Last year, it was a close race in Cywiffle between me and Jordan. It wasn't really close, but it was close. But it was easily Jordan's award. Um, I think it, I, he might have won that unanimously. Cywiffle. Well, uh, who did you vote for? I voted for him. Okay, so then I think he did. Yeah, because because that he I. I I can't argue that he had a better pitching season than me in the regular yeah. season. Um, so, I mean, it's Jordan Smith award to lose this year. I mean, it's his award and it's, I mean, he's got to stay healthy, which I don't think he's had any issues yet. Um, but it's his award. Like you said, he's going to win their team eight or nine games. You got to beat him in the playoffs. Just like, People have to beat you in the playoffs. Um, but I see you and Jordan right there at the top. But it's yeah. Jordan's award to lose. Jordan? He's younger I'm, than you, dude. Yeah, I know. But I'm coming for you. This is – it's <laughs> we Adam said it last year. This is the Cam Smith Award, and uh, I won it back. Um, as much as, like, I want to do other things. But now that I'm potentially not going to UF this year, that's on the down low. Um, not anymore. Well, the dates haven't been announced, so. Eh. Anyways, continue. I'm coming, and I want to win this award. Um, now that I and last year at the beginning of the season two, I gave up two home runs in the first week off the lob pitch. I gave up three home runs in that first game. Two were off the lob pitch. That's not going to happen again. We were. I was playing around with the lob pitch, you know, trying to make it work we know that doesn't work all the time and i i kind of planned my way around that the rest of the season and didn't let it happen again and that hurt a little bit when it came down to the end but this year all right jordan me and you baby let's do this one and two from uh season one and two and uh i want to win the award again so i'm gonna bet on myself for sure but I would not be surprised if Andrew is in this conversation, uh, if Sam is in this conversation, uh, a couple of rookies are in this conversation. It could happen. I mean, Tony was a rookie last year and finished third in the category. Uh, I could easily see Caleb or Colin or even Tony again or anybody in this category, but I got to go with uh, me and Jordan too. And oh my gosh, St. Louis is the best sports town in the history of soccer. We're 5 and 0. We're 5 and 0, baby. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Enough about soccer. We're back to Wolf of Ball. It is the Silver Slugger Award. Jason Warsenholm won this last year. Um, let's see. Ryan Brown was second and Ryan O'Rear was third. What do you think Silver Slugger for this year season three. i want you to go first i got a hot take oh i, I love you... hot takes so i'll go first for sure silver slugger uh i don't think it's a hot take uh it's not one of the top three from last year um but it is in my opinion the best hitter in moif and the most feared hitter in moif it's cole layton uh i i i don't think that's anyone can really argue that i think every pitcher will tell you that we pitch more carefully to cole than anyone in the league Hundred percent, and I, I will pick. I will probably pick him every single year for this award. He hasn't won it. Oh, he won it the first year. He didn't win it last year, but I think him losing it last year is going to make him want it even more. And he's going to be my pick. I uh, I would also, uh, oh, who Sam Skibby would be my second. Uh, second pick just because we've seen him hit and I know he missed a couple games last year that kind of hurt him uh, but he could be right there as well but Cole's my pick let's hear the hot takes from the commissioner this is something not a lot of people talk about love it he's a quiet dude okay John Willenberg oh I like it he, he was, was fourth last year in average yep I was about to pull it up I like that uh 
seven home runs, 28 RBIs. So in that I, lineup too, it's so it's, it's right. And that, that perfect. could be helping him. You know, you yep. got to find somebody to try to, to attack. Maybe you're skipping over Tony and Andrew and then there's John, like, heck, who do you, who do you go after? So, uh, and then you have Josh and, um, uh, Hitchcock. Oh my Hitchcock. God. And Dalton so, yeah. gets on base. I love this. So, yeah. It's a great pick. I like that. Um, he makes contact and it's hard contact and it's line drive contact. Like, so I think John Willenbrink last year was his first year as like a, like a really competitive fast pitch player. He played in yellow bats. Yeah. Ooh, I said the name. Gosh, uh, get what out of here. Um, bleep that out. Go back and bleep it out. And people will be like, who did? Um, but no, last year was his first year in fast pitch with Mo Whiff. So, and it, he was awesome. Like, yeah. so I see him getting better and more consistent. And John Willenbrink is my season three silver slugger. I like that. That's a great pick. Um, yeah, I like it. Hot take for sure. But Hey, I love it. Keep those coming. Keep them coming with the next award. It's the big one. It's MVP. And you hot get to go here, first man. on this one. There's no hot take for me. <laughs> All right. You going Jordan again? Back to back. Jordan Smith. Nope. Don't see it. Not for you, but you called him the batting champ. You yeah. called him the Cy Whiffle. No, you called him the batting champ. What did you? Okay. And I didn't have you... him at Cy Whiffle either. You did. Who did I you have me. Oh, I have me at whatever. Cy Whiffle. Whatever. Anyways, Jordan Smith, uh, we all saw how be- how much better he got from season to season. It, I see it just keep keeping with that path, and uh, I see him taking back to back. I would not be surprised. Um, I have, I have a few. Uh, I don't think it'll be Jordan. Um, okay. I hope it's not. I hope it's not Jordan, just because like I like that it changes, but. Obviously, oh, we you, so in that case, you hope that the bombers don't win because you hope it changes. I hope it change. Yeah, wait, what? You hope the awards change? No, right? this you award, want... the MVP award. I'm talking about the MVP award. The championship has never changed, and it's not going to change. Good. Anyways, that's continue. a hot take. Uh, a couple guys I could see. Jason, he was top three last year. Um. I think he can do it again, especially now not having to rely so much on his on his pitching now that he has three pitchers. Uh, I think he can fine-tune. I think he'll be a little bit better of a pitcher this year. Um, and then we know his hitting. Uh, Ryan O'Rear I have in that category as well. Uh, I had him uh, um, winning the, uh, the batting champ. I had him up there with Cole. Um, so he's a guy you could see in that category. And then obviously I, I gotta say myself, I, I finished second the first year and last year. Uh, I'm a top 10 player in the country. And I, yeah, I, I mean, if I can just keep pitching the way I have been and coming up with some, some hits like I did at the end of the season last year or the second half of the season last year. Yeah. I mean, I'm always going to bet on myself, but. I got a cat in my lap now, so no. And, um, but like you said, Jordan definitely a good pick, and he's going to be right there in that discussion for sure. I can see you winning it. Like like you said, you've been second place the first two seasons, so I know you how bad you want it, and I want you- it less this year than I than I. Well, I don't want it any less, but. I'm not going to like I, last year I went out and like tried. I, I was like week one, I want to win MVP and it messed me up completely. And I was absolute dog crap for the first half of the season. So I don't want that expectation on myself. I, I just want to win games, but obviously I want to win the award too. So I want that belt. That belt is sick. It looks so cool. And that I want it. I want to put it up here on the wall by all these jerseys. Uh, they want to show it off. I want to wear it to the games. I'm jealous. Jordan, you better, better wear it. you Jared, better wear that thing to the you games. You gotta bring, bring it at least that. night one. Bring I would it. bring it every single <laughs> week. I'm not even lying. Hundred percent I would. Uh but what a fun uh 
discussion about our awards. It's going to be a fun season, and these are going to be so unpredictable. And I am keeping tabs this year. I wrote down who I picked. I'm going to write down who you picked. And at the end of the year, we're going to talk about them. Dude, look at this cat on my lap. Look at this. Uh, But it's going to be fun. And talk about our teams, too, because... Sorry, Archers, you're not making the playoffs because I said you're going to win the whole thing. So, who knows? Jordan's going to prove us wrong. Um, Josh, it's a fun episode. I love doing predictions. It's fun to talk about the season. The season's here. Um, anything else you want to say before we uh, sign off of here tonight? I'm just excited to see all the hard work come into play. Um, all the new things that we have coming, you know, we got this, uh, electronic scoreboard with the timer on it that will, I forgot about that improve, like, just so like the players don't have to come to the booth and ask, Hey, what's the score? How much time is left? Like, it's just going to be seen. And even the fans can see it that are there. Um, no, just these rookies. Like, I'm just, I'm excited to see everything come together, uh, Thursday night and it's gonna be a fun one, man. I'm, I'm excited to see how this all plays out for sure. Yeah. I I'm really looking forward to it. Um, please come out, uh, Thursday night, you know, opening week, uh, invite your families, invite your friends. Uh, I know last year we had a big opening night with a lot of people there. It's a lot of fun. We'll have a couple of beers. If you need one, come find me. Um, you know, I, I just, I'm looking forward to it. Like you said, all the hard work that we've put in, it, it's, it's like Christmas morning every every day now leading up to the season you know we have a couple fine-tuned things left to do before thursday but it's it's almost just it's just counting the days now and uh i'm excited to actually play i'm excited i'm excited to play yeah it's been a long time for you since uh the beginning of august man it's been a minute so i'm ready to get back out there and if if um if you can, you know, if you're if you're one of the late games, get there a little early. Uh, you know, obviously we're gonna have some pictures getting taken, um, but come early, hang out, stay late if you play early, hang out with the guys, learn. Especially if you're a young rookie, learn um, from watching the games before you learn about the rules, learn about pitching, learn about hitting. You know, just little things here and there. Pick it up. Uh, starts week one, so don't wait until midway through the season. And like our goal this year is for like just for me and Cam to not be at the booth or the table all night yes. long. Um, you know, we got some some more guys in the front office and we're gonna lean on them a little bit and some of the other captains to, you know, take over the booth. So Cam and I can walk around, talk to people, uh, talk to the kids that just come up to the fence and are yep. watching and um just to be able to sit and enjoy instead of having to entertain the entire night. So yeah, um, Ex- absolutely. Come up and bring, talk to us. Come bring me us. to the bullpen. And if you need, if you got questions, yeah. you need help. Like I, I'll have time to actually, you know, get some work in with you guys and help you out with anything that you guys need. If you need to learn how to cut your balls, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you need help and, or you want me to do it for you, um, I drink Bud Select. Um, that's my trade off. Glad uh, you said that. I gotta go get a, a pack of beer. Yeah. For my trade, but um, yeah, I've been. I think I cut one, two, three. I don't know. Cut like ten balls in the last two or three days, uh, just for myself. So if you need some done, let me know. Uh, but yeah, hit us up. You know, during those games in between, if you see us walking around, uh, just pick our brains. It's gonna be a lot of fun to actually get out there and talk with you guys more. So sure. And if you're not gonna be there or your family can't be there. We're live on on Facebook and YouTube, uh, so make sure you follow us on there or have your families follow us on there. Um, also, check out our Twitter, Instagram, and we got to get better at TikTok. Uh, we need to find someone who can just do that for us. Cause may have a guy. There you go. Love it. Um, but again, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the MoWiff 3 Up 3 Down podcast. Be sure to tune in on Thursday, March 30th for opening night on Facebook and YouTube. I'm Cam Smith. He's Josh Rogers, the commissioner. We're out. See ya.